Is it possible that I say the words Bismillah at the beginning of eating, for instance, and after that I eat like anyone else? But is it what we want to do? No. So saying the words Bismillah, there must be something more to it. So it's not only about starting with the words Bismillah, but something to do with what comes after. In this case, the process of eating, for instance. And we know that Bismillah is a dhikr. So I'm remembering something when I say Bismillah. Actually, when I say Alhamdulillah, when I say all the blessed words that we learn from the Quran and the Sunnah. And we are going to get some insight into what it means to act Bismillah. Say and act Bismillah. Live Bismillah. And why it is important, why it matters so much. How many times at least do we say Bismillah in a day? Repetition means need. The more we need something, the more we repeat it. And do we complain? I'm bored. I'm doing the same thing again and again and again. No. If we're very thirsty, like when we're fasting in Ramadan, we are so happy to drink the water. We don't complain. Why? We are taking care of a need. When we are aware of our need, the repetition is a source of pleasure. We're happy that my need is being taken care of. So if Bismillah is repeated so many times, it's indicating a need within us. We may not be aware of the need, but as we become aware of the need, we will enjoy it like we enjoy water when we are very thirsty or food when we are very hungry. So we'll enjoy Bismillah because we feel the hunger, the need for Bismillah. All the surahs in the Quran, except one, they all start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What does it mean? The surah is the word of God, the speech of God. So God is speaking to us about what? The Quran is divine guidance. So we come into this world and usually we think we know how to live our life. I have plans for my life, for my career, even for my children, even my friends, if they ask me, maybe I have something to say. But I never realized that actually, do we really know how to live this life in the best way? We make all our plans for getting the most important thing. You know what it is? Life is not lasting. My life is not under my control. Yet, I forget this very extremely important reality and I make plans about my life. And so, I do not feel the need for guidance. The moment I focus on the reality, I need guidance. What am I doing here in this flowing, fleeting, passing, transient world? What is the purpose of life? That is what the message of the Quran the content of the surahs of the Quran is teaching us the purpose of life, the meaning of life, and how to live according to this purpose. So we fulfill the purpose. It's teaching us how to find the eternity within this temporary world, how to witness it. That's why Shahada is so important in Islam. So this divine guidance is actually extremely important. We don't feel in our heart the importance because we don't feel the need for it. When we start becoming aware of our need, we become aware of how very important the message of the Quran. And this divine guidance starts with Bismillah, Iqra, which means read, and it's related to Quran. This is the first revelation. Angel Jibril, Gabriel السلام, comes and says to the Prophet السلام, while he is reflecting and the Prophet السلام, answers, I cannot read. So why would Jibreel السلام, ask Prophet to read? Do you think Jibreel السلام, who is sent there by Allah, Allah, do you think they don't know that the Prophet السلام, is illiterate? Of course they do. So how come they are asking an illiterate person to read when they know that he cannot read? Is the written word the only thing we can read? 
What else can we read, for instance? We read happenings, we read faces. So when we look at mm -hmm. your child, you look at their face and you try to guess what's going on. And if you know them well, you read, you say, ah, oh, something, they've done something. So reading is not limited to the written word. We can read the world as well. Reading is actually a codification, an expression of the world. It is related to our experience of the world. When I say, I am sad, you all understand why? Because you all have an experience of sadness. So you are referring to something in the world. So the words, when we write the words, they are a sign, a symbol, a codification that expresses our experiences in the world. So if I write apple, we all know we're talking about the apple out there. And I can call it Elma and the Turkish speakers will think of the same thing. And if I say pom, the French speaker will think of the same object. So reading is about decodifying a sign, learning how to read signs. So Jibril السلام, is the angel of Wahi, revelation. So he's bringing something from God. He's not speaking of his own. Whatever he is bringing, it cannot be something that I can find myself. I can know by myself. It has to be something totally new. He's teaching something that we don't know and we cannot know without the divine guidance. So he must be teaching him something totally new, something that we cannot learn except from God himself. So it must be a new type of reading and it must be a reading that the illiterate prophet has the ability to perform. He has the ability to do this new reading. What is Jibreel asking the prophet والسلام, to read? So he says, read, iqra, iqra. And then the third time he says, iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khala. Read in the name of your Rabb, your sustainer who has created or who creates. Now we have more information. The reading is something to do with the creation what is created so it is and it is done in a particular way it is not random reading it is a reading in the name of our sustainer who has created so the prophet may be illiterate but he is being appointed as a universal teacher to all humanity to teach us this new reading of the creation in the name of our sustainer the the one who is created us who is creating everything so now we want to know how how do we read in the name of our sustainer how do we read in the name of the one who creates how do we read in the name of God God the name Allah includes all the other attributes of God there are many 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 passages that's why the more you study the Quran the more you get you fall in love with it but among those many I chose one so this is a passage from the Quran and this is repeated again and again it says in the creation here the creation in Arabic is master it's in nafi khalqi khalq is an ing form it means it's a dynamic process in English you can have both creation could be the process or it could be something done finished in Arabic it's in the creating the process of creation of the heavens and the earth and you see the heavens and the earth the succession of night and day night day night day something is going on dynamically something is going on changing time there are indeed signs ayat remember we read language we read the signs of that language now we are reading the signs of the divine language of creation the signs in the creation also we read anything that has meaning if it is read it means what i'm reading is meaningful look at around us is there anything that doesn't look meaningful meaningful it means when i extract the meaning what I, when i listen to to the meaning I am reading. I am reading the signs. It's saying all these are signs, not for everyone, for those who have insight. Everyone has the ability, but we cannot read without the guidance 
of the Quran. Those who remember God standing, sitting, and lying down. This is a metaphor in the Arabic language. It means in all state of being. Whatever they are doing, what do they do? They reflect on what? On the creation. What was the Prophet ﷺ doing in the cave? He was reflecting. Reflecting is very important. So reflecting is done with both the intellect and the heart. And we're told this in the Quran as well. So who reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. And this world ayat is repeated hundreds of times in the Quran. It, again, it means it's very important. Ayah, sign, means a sign with meaning. It means if it's a sign with meaning, the first First reaction is what does it mean that's exactly what the Quran is teaching us but we need to feel the need feel the curiosity first so we are going to look at how to read because the, the Quran is full of teaching of how to read and I cannot take all the passages that teaches us how to ask questions but just to give us like an insight an introduction of how powerful this guidance we have with us and it's like a treasure but we're, we have the treasure there and we're not aware of how valuable it is. So it says, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَى طعام. Let human being look at his food. So this look, أَلَمْ تَرَى Don't you see? is repeated a lot in the Quran. And look at the end. It says all this is, this is the process of bringing, creating food, producing food. It says for use and convenience. If there is convenience, if there is use, it means all this process is done done purposely. There is purpose. It's not like randomly it became food. And it points to an unseen source, an unseen disposer who knows, who is in control, and who cares. But in order to confirm that this is true, we start from the beginning. It says, look at your food, we look at your, our food. The first thing is, it says, we pour forth water. This is repeated so many times in the Quran. It is God who sends water, the rain. It is, we sent. They repeat it so many times. Okay, so we start there. Reflection starts here. We go out and I look at the rain. It's raining, let's say. Pause, look at the rain. What do we see? Do we see God pouring water? How can I say, yes, this is true. It is God who is pouring this water. Because I go out, I look and I see, I say, it's raining, water is coming. I don't see God anywhere there. And I come back, so in my life I live without realizing I see water coming on its own. And then I go and read this during the prayer or when I am reading the Quran for... Can you see the contradiction? The Quran is not sent to us only to read without understanding. It's also sent to us as guidance to reflect, to understand. Because if Allah is saying this, it means I need it. He's teaching us something that no one else can teach us. And something that we need urgently and very importantly because it is related to eternal life. Because this world, if we don't learn how to prepare for eternal life, we're stuck in this transient temporary life. This is a very important point. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to remind his companions of death all the time. Death is not only one day when I die. Every evening when we go to sleep, it's a mini death. I don't know if I'm going to wake up in the morning or not. And you can't say I'm young. I have many years. There is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. It's nothing to do with age. It's to do with divine will. It is not under my control. The more we think of transience, the more we realize that we don't have control and we feel an urgent need for help. What's going on? Everything I'm dreaming of, could end tomorrow. True meaning has to be lasting. It has to transcend the death. It has to transcend tomorrow. So I go and see the rain and it feels like rain is coming. So I pause now because I say, but it's saying that God. So is it true? Is what I'm experiencing true? Or is what the Quran is teaching me true? I have to stop and ask this question. We need honesty if we are going to be students of the Quran. While I am eating, does it feel 
Mm, this food is beautiful, it's delicious. I love it. Is it horizontal or does it remind me of something beyond? Have I learned to connect with the food in not horizontal but vertical? The area, my loving the food, my taking pleasure is the area saying, How does it know me? How can it do this? Asking the questions with the rain. As a Muslim, we say, Of course, it's God, but how does it feel? When I go and learn at school that it's all going on on its own, I don't feel disturbed because that's how actually I experience the world. So what we are taught is more than just say, repeat, I am a Muslim, therefore God has created it. It's true, but it is not enough. I need to confirm tasdiq. I need to say, sadaqallahu al-azim. I need to make shahada. Shahada means to observe Mushahada. And then shahada means I testify. Can I testify to something I have not seen and have not experienced? So here we are going to stop, pause, and I look at the, pro the more actually I know about the process of uh, rain. It's amazing. What is this water? Does it have all this knowledge? Does it have all this power? It interacts all with the laws and with the chemistry and uh, inside the molecules. They receive energy and then they become looser and then let's get uh, you know, lighter and let's fly there. The more you start questioning, the more it doesn't make sense at all. And it has wisdom. It's not acting randomly. It's acting with purpose that benefits not only human beings, but all living beings. They cannot create anything because they themselves are being created. Can water really do this? What is needed for this cycle to happen? The cycle of water, of rain? It needs wisdom. It's very wisely. It needs lots of power because it involves everything else in the, all the elements, all the earth. Water is everywhere in the air. Everything is interconnected. Lots of power. Control, knowledge. Does water have any of this? Even a little bit it doesn't have, let alone controlling everything. If we all come together with all our technology now, we can do it. So we we can say now that two things are happening. All these qualities are needed. So whoever is sending the water has to have all these qualities. And this cannot be water. And it cannot be the earth. And it cannot be the air. So la ilaha illallah. I am reading la ilaha illallah in the creation. When I start seeing that lots of things are going on for this rain, this water to fall, this water can't be doing it itself. Not only I now refute water, it cannot be the one doing it, but at the same process makes me aware that this is something so amazing going on. The one doing it can only be one with knowledge knowledge of everything, power over everything, wisdom of everything. So here, can you see that we are refuting water can't be the maker of all this? And we are getting to know who is making this. The one who is making this is all powerful, caring, wise. Can you see that now my knowing God has increased? I know him in a new way through the process of raining, the process of interacting with the water in the raining, being amazed. And this amazement and awe goes to the maker, the one who creates this raining. That is my Rab. That is the creator. That is God. Now I know him more. God is not an empty word anymore. There is something I feel in my heart. If there is no experience, there is no feeling. Is there anything you like eating? Usually for kids it's pizza or ice cream, right? And oh, I see smiles. <laughs> Why? Because ice cream, we have a, a live, a living experience of ice cream. So when I say the word, it's not an empty word. That word refers to an experience that I have, a pleasant experience that I have of ice cream. So when I say ice cream, I am happy. Now, when I say God, I'm filled with awe with amazement, with love, with sometimes you feel like going into prostration, so overwhelming, oh. And that's why we look forward to the time of the prayer 
and go and prostrate before this wonderful, amazing God. And the more we know him, the more we feel very close. The same reasoning, the same approach that I used for water, I can use for air, I can use for the food itself, I can use for the soil. The moment I say, what's going on here? What is needed for this to happen? And I find out that lots of things are needed. Can soil do this? Not at all. I can do it. How can I do it? When we are told, let human being look at his food, we don't go and look at my, I don't, if I don't go and look at my food, am I reading the Quran? No. I'm reciting, repeating the Quran. If I'm reading, it says, Allah is saying, look at your food. I'm not looking. So this applies to all the elements. The relationship between them is even more amazing, between water and the soil and the food. A seed becomes food, becomes a tree, becomes fruit. Something miraculous is happening right in front of us. The more we reflect and look mindfully, consciously, the more we can only feel it in our heart, the awe. And we can, the, the intellect can only refute the la ilaha part and the illallah is revealed unto us in our heart because iman comes into the heart. And so how do we, what is the test that we know we read what's going on? It's we end with the beautiful names of God. When we say la ilaha illallah, Allah includes all the names. So we're saying there is no uh, God, no deity, nothing worth uh, asking for, uh, worshiping except God, Allah. It means there is no knowing except Him. There is no owner of wisdom except Him. There is no owner of life except Him. There is no powerful except Him. This is what we are actually experiencing through our reading. So it is a process of shahada. The more we read the creation, the ayat in the creation, everything out there is an ayat, signs, the more we will see how they are proclaiming the names of God. They are testifying, bearing witness to God. It is alam al-shahada. In the Quran, the creation is called the realm of witnessing. How can I witness anything if there is nothing to see and experience? As I witness their witnessing, and now I can witness. I can bear witness. Now I can join their glorification, their tisbihat. Tisbihat, the first meaning of sabbaha, to glorify God, is to refute shirk. The la ilaha part is the tisbih. So they are saying, it's not from me. I don't know how to do anything. Water is saying, can you see? I know nothing. I can't do anything. Wherever you pour me, I go. This is one of the first things that fascinated me about the Quran is water, rain, because it's repeated so many times. And these are only a few. It says, it is God who sends. Because why is it saying it is God? Attracting my attention because it doesn't feel like it is God. It took me many years of catching myself, experiencing the rain as if it's happening on its own. And then saying, astaghfirullah, what's going on again? Repeat, remember, it cannot come on its own. Then we start seeing, hearing, experiencing the beautiful names of God, witnessing the beautiful names of God. It is God who sends water down from the sky, and with it, he revives. There is truly a sign, an ayah in this for people who listen. It is God who has created the heavens and the earth and who has da sent down water from the sky. And with it, he has brought forth produce to nourish you. He has made ships useful to you, sailing by the sea by his command and the rivers too. We send the winds to fertilize and we bring down. So because we say, oh no, no, it's the winds that are bringing the water together to make clouds. And when the clouds are too heavy, they, how do they know? There is a law. A law is only what I saw happening. There is not a law there making things. We send the winds and then we bring down water from the sky for you to drink. You do not control its sources. So the test of reading these things in the name of God, reading as we are taught in the Quran, reading in the name of our sustainer who has created, is we always end up with the beautiful names of God. And this is the confirmation
the testimony, the shahada, conscious shahada here and now, not just repeating words. I say la ilaha illallah, but I don't feel anything because it's, it's just words. It's like the ice cream. If I know nothing about ice cream, you say ice cream, I don't know what it is. Even if I see picture, it doesn't, it doesn't impact my move, my heart. But if you eat it and you like it, next time when they say ice cream, say yes, me too, <laughs> please. You like it, you love it, you have now a heart connection with it. So actually when we read Bismillah, when we read the way we are taught in the Quran, we start witnessing, experiencing how rain bears witness to the beautiful names of God. So it, it's making God known to us with his beautiful names. It is glorifying him with praise as we are told so many times in the Quran, again and again. It says everything is glorifying, you glorify as well. I don't know how to glorify. I glorify by means of their glorification, by witnessing, by saying, yes, this is how it is, by feeling it, accepting it, confirming it. And that's how we do the shahada. The shahada is not just a word. It just takes some uh, honesty and some being aware of our need and a little bit of attention then there will be true shahada and true gratitude and praise alhamdulillah means when i drink the water i am not my heart doesn't feel all the love and the gratitude to the water and then alhamdulillah at the end i add it like a little bit of something on top there's no organic relationship no i drink the water and it reminds me of god it's it, so my drinking of water becomes an act of worship when it is done bismillah it increases my knowledge of god it increases my iman it becomes an act of ibadah here and now and it becomes an act of ihsan because now i am feeling the awe of the one who creates this and he is the one who can take my thirst no nothing else can do this water doesn't know me but now water becomes a friend, a fellow traveler in this world. It's teaching me, reminding me about God. See, now the world is not a distraction anymore because otherwise everything is distracting us about from God. And I, I have to remember, I have to remember. How do I remember? They are all reminding us everywhere. You go, there is a nice breeze and it reminds you of all different names of God. And Alhamdulillah, and now, the more I know God, the more my love for him is real. I feel it here and now. But if I still experience water as coming, rain coming on its own, water, bismillah, alhamdulillah, and the water itself, oh, I love water, I love coffee, then I missed the point. I'm not reading the Quran, I'm just repeating the Quran. I am not paying attention. I'm not confirming. At the end we say, Sadaq Allahul Azim. It means Allah said the truth. I never checked if it was the truth or not. That's why I said, let's be honest. So there is no reading, neither Bismillah nor no Shahada. I'm repeating the Shahada also. So that will, if we pause, I will feel the contradiction of my experience with my claims. And do you know what are my true beliefs? Is my true belief what I claim and say with words? or what I experience and feel. Which one is my true belief? What, what we experience and feel. That's why in the Quran, Allah says, most people, they believe in God, illa wa hum mushrikun. Only in the state of shirk. It doesn't say they make shirk. Unless we wake up and make the decision, then we are on a journey. Sometimes we forget. It's okay. Because now, at least there is a possibility of remembering. But if there is no possibility of remembering, so not denying God is not belief. It's not iman billah. Not denying God is good. Of course it's good. But it's the starting point. It's not the end. And saying the word Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah is good. Why? Because it reminds me of all the shahada that I have experienced. When I say it, sometimes I have the time to reflect, sometimes I don't. But when I say those words, all my experience of God, of who He is, of His beautiful names, all comes back. So I'm filled 
with that ala bi dhikrillah tatma'inna al-qulub with that tranquility yes i have i am not here in this transient world on my own without purpose the one the source of all things that i need is all loving all compassionate all powerful and he's speaking to me and telling me showing me the way back to him isn't that wonderful it is absolutely anything that does not take me to the beautiful names is a false fake reading for instance the reading we do in science they also claim that they are reading the creation but in the quran we are thought what they come up with at the end the interpretation for instance you put water with this it's going to become this that's something that everyone sees the fact but the interpretation they say it is doing it itself don't say anything you can't say it's doing it itself there is no need for god as if no it is indicating it is testifying to the beautiful names of god in the quran we say we are told whatever they say it is surmise guesses without evidence falsehood dhan only the maker can teach us the true purpose if i'm reading in the name of god and i can read even more deeply then it becomes light upon light nurun ala nur it is important because the beautiful names of god pertain to eternal life they are all encompassing in this world they are eternal and they are related to eternal happiness eternal happiness is what all of us are looking for while we are studying while we are having a career while we're making money while we are taking care of our children cleaning our house we're always looking for that peace and tranquility and happiness and joy but even if we can get it it is not lasting it doesn't last it only lasts when it is in the name of god because the name of god is lasting the name of god pertains to akhirah to the hereafter to eternity to paradise we start feeling living um how to say a mini paradise in this world before we're looking forward now to paradise because i have that experience now my relationship with water has already transformed when i see water i don't see something out there i only relate to it when i am thirsty i see a divine gift a miracle of god a fellow creation creature that is reminding me of god teaching me about god glorifying god and i i learn to automatically i say bismillah i remember oh my friend water it is glorifying god god created so, something so wonderful and as i drink i am feel in the presence of god and that experience because i lived it in the past in the name of god now i don't see it as just i like it now it has another meaning so even when i'm not doing the reflection now the word has already been associated with something vertical but i have to do it enough and not only thinking thinking is not enough i have to feel it we are told in the quran qulubun ya'qiluna biha they reason with their hearts because if i don't feel the awe the amazement i easily give the power to water without realizing but when i stay there and say can it do this my heart says impossible cannot and my intellect as well and also who it's easy to deny the power of god because it's so everywhere and it's so easy that we may take it for granted and say it's beyond i can't understand it i can't understand it but i can feel it i can go i feel it so much that i feel the amazement and the awe and i go to sajda to prostration so if i'm saying i didn't understand it yes because it doesn't understand everything because i am limited i understand my limitation that's why i need guidance so bismillah it's a reminder it is like a key i have the key i come use the key and i stay outside what we are doing when we reflect we use the key and we are at the door and we see the door start opening when i am ready i'm reflecting and i open the experience and the more i do this the more i am introduced to the beautiful realm of the beautiful names of god and not only the water itself the rain itself the food itself is a miracle miracles will start happening in your life as well that's why i'm saying this is an introduction 
to the moon. This is a key to something truly amazing. And when we eat the food, for instance, what do I do when I eat the food? I only put it in my mouth. And then digestion starts. I don't know how it's going on. Something is going on. Someone is doing something. It's not the food and it's not me. So I am witnessing. I am watching. I'm witnessing. And if you are a doctor or a biologist, and you know more about the process, you are even more amazed. So I take that and I'm so amazed and I watch, I witness that I am not the one who is doing this. The food cannot do it, Shahada. When I read in the name of God, always the beautiful names of God, that is the Shahada. Now there is, God is a reality. That's why we are told in the Quran, when God, whenever God, the believers are only those whose heart tremble with awe. You feel the love, the awe, whenever God is mentioned. And whose faith increases when his ayat are recited. Because his ayat are teaching us to read life, the creation around us, and uncovering, unlocking these beautiful names of God everywhere. All those fears and anxieties that we have Suddenly, we have the best healer, the best provider, the best is with us all the time. Subhanallah, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. Something momentous, something amazing, something that the ruh, the soul longs for. Just like the body needs food and water and air, the soul and the heart, they need eternity they need the beautiful names of god they need akhara they need to be with god here and now and they are they are craving they are hungry everything glorifies god there is not one thing that does not glorify god and praise him can you imagine imagine the world is just like happening randomly and suddenly you learn to see and experience the world as they are all glorifying God. They are all talking about, you are a traveler on a journey to paradise and the source of paradise is with you now. Suddenly it's like you were in the dark and suddenly all the lights are on. Isn't that amazing? The more you live like this, the more, you know, some people like traveling the world because it's exciting, new places. If you live this way, even the same place it is even more exciting because every day in the same place, you experience it in a different way. Those who don't eat Bismillah, it says they enjoy this life and eat as cattle. And somewhere else, we are told they are even worse than cattle because cattle at least doesn't have the ability for more or the need for more. So I like this ayah because, you know, when we're driving, you start, you say, Bismillahi majraha wa mursaha. So it is the ship, the ark of Noah, sails Bismillah and anchors Bismillah. The whole process is Bismillah. And that ayah, that ayah is really beautiful. Everything is for in the name of God my birth, my life, my death, everything. Because actually we're dying every day. Keep attention that the world is transient. Otherwise we can't read the ayat in the name of God because they are flowing. And when they are flowing, we start asking where are they coming from? But if I see things as the tree is always there and I, I want to forget that everything is passing because I'm scared, because I don't know, I'm not sure, then I miss the whole thing. When I am honest and say, this is the reality, please help, then Allah helps. Something amazing is going on. That amazement, we, st the, we stay with it, we feel it, because that's where the beautiful names reveal themselves. Allah is saying, this is who I am. And you say, yes, we say, yes, you are the creator. You are the one who take my thirst when I'm thirsty. You are the one who feeds me when I'm hungry. Food cannot take my hunger, it doesn't know me. We start living from the heart and from the ruh, from the soul.